There we go, over to you, John. Perfect, thanks, thanks a million. Hi everyone, good evening. Uh, my name is John, John Maduro. Um, they know him by cast by John. Um, I normally fish saltwater flies here in Ireland, so I mostly dive saltwater patterns. I fish for bass, sea trout, um, polyp. Well, every I live right by the coast here in Waterford, so I mainly fish for for saltwater. And um, growing up in the Caribbean as well, I'm originally from Aruba, but I'm in Ireland 22 years. So, but originally from the Caribbean, we grew up fishing on the salt, so it's all saltwater patterns. I do tie trout flies as well and salmon, but mainly um, is saltwater patterns. So first, we're going to start with an, an easy pattern there that, um, well, not easy, but um, one that Derek asked me to tie um, the last time is the, I have friends that fish for salmon, and a lot of them would fish with prawns and things like that. And uh, but some rivers in Ireland, you know, allowed to fish with, um, you know, allowed to fish with live bait or anything like that. So they asked me to tie them some red prawns, which I've tied. And last year they had success on that pattern, actually. So I've tied a few more. And um, this year, so I'll be tying this now. And um, yeah, hopefully um, you guys enjoy it. <laughs> John, so, can you sit right behind the vice? Sorry. Can you sit right behind the vice? So the, the white behind you is making it blurred, but with your black shirt on, it'd be brilliant if you were right behind the vice. The other way, to the left. No, it's the curtain. He's got the curtain open. Out of, out of the oh, yeah. Sorry. That's brilliant. better. Yeah, but then I can see them because the guy told me to switch off my light. <laughs> I'm, blind. I'm blind, so I can't really see. Put 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 your light on the vice, John. Yeah, but the other gentleman said a minute ago he couldn't see anything because it's it's too bright for him. Can you guys see now? Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Right. right so the hook and the vice I have is the A Rex um, shrimp hook. This is a size six. Is the NS one fifty six on a size six. So gonna, and the thread I'm using here is the 30 denier from the um, sample of like the nano silk 30 deniers. So that's what I'm using nano silk for for this for this pattern. So two seconds there. Oh, apologies, give me two seconds. I forgot to get the dubbings. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. For you guys that have just joined. If you go to uh, John's picture across the top and, lo and look for uh, iPad, iPad 13 and click on that and go to the three little dots and click on that and pin it, then John's picture will stay center screen. Right, apologies for that. Now, can you see the hook here? Yeah. So I like adding always a bit of super glue to my hook when I'm using nano silk. It seems to, it helps hold it faster instead of slipping on me. So, so you see, it doesn't slip then for me. So it walk free. It passed the hook point. So first I'll start now with some dubbing. First I start with a semi seal, spawn from semi seal. And um, I'll be using the red one for this one. Then I'm tying a red trim. So You don't need too much to start with, just a small bit and keep 
you keep um, spreading it a bit so it stays a bit even there. So when you brush it, it has a nice, it's all even coming out then. You don't need to do it too tight because all this is going to be brushed out as feelers and I'll be passing the thread over that anyway. So just do that one and I brush that out. Give it a good brush just to get it out. <coughs> and for that one, we're gonna put a small bit of this. Um, it's um, what you call this. Um, it's not the opossum. This one is fin raccoon. So this is in red, fin raccoon. So I use this a lot. It has a lot of movement. These they look like feelers. Then so I use this for the fly. You just need a small bit. You don't need too much of it. I'm gonna lay that just on top. This far. And you don't cut the you don't cut the the material. You kind of use it there and make your way up to the back there, just to start building kind of a body on the fly. Just to start giving it a bit of volume there. Okay. Now I'm just gonna throw in two board bristles. The original one, I didn't tie it with board bristle, but then my friend, he fishes a lot of salmon and he asked me to throw in two board bristles in it. And since then I started tying them with the board bristles to look better with them. And there's a bit more movement as well. So it all helps a bit. This there and that's for that side. So things are gonna change them. Huh? Be a bit finicky these board bristles are time to, to tie. If anybody's got any questions they want to ask John, if you unmute yourself and then remute yourself after. So there we have them. So I put them kind of in an X, and that's the way I can get them to sit perfect for me. <clears throat> So now we're going to add a small bit of American opossum. This is in color red. These are from Future Fly. I like them. They're very soft and a lot of movement in this. You don't need too much of it. You just need a small bit, like that much. Bring a small bit to the firm. Then you're gonna do it a small bit shorter than the raccoon. So it kind of have that taper then a bit. So a small bit shorter than the raccoon. Okay. Now we're gonna put a small bit of the Vicuña dubbing, the the red one. It looks a lot like same seal, like not. Um, it looks a lot like the seals. But I really like this Vicuña dubbing, the SLF dubbing. Since I started using, I kind of 
I don't really use much of my seals for us. I can't really find it much as well. So this was a good substitute for it. I really like it. So there we have the red one. So you're building this to stitch your eyes on top of it. Okay. So now we're gonna brush this again, give it a brush. Can you guys see it so far? Yeah. Okay. I need my eyes now. In seconds, I'm not to pull in the eyes here somewhere. Okay. John, just a quick question. Yeah. Just a quick question. I, I've never done any saltwater fly fishing. Why yeah. red? I you probably joined a bit late. This one is not for salt water. This, oh, one, you, this one is actually for um uh friends of mine they actually fish for salmon. Okay. Um, they tie they tie um sorry, they, they fish normally prawns, red prawns and purple prawns on the river in Ireland. But some okay. of the rivers then they cannot they're not allowed to fish prawns, so they have to fish the fly only. So then okay. they ask me to tie red prawns for them to use instead of um instead of using a traditional salmon fly. And because I was I had it in one of the shows one time and they say, oh that should really work. So then they I tied two two for for my friend and he actually had fish on it last year then. So then of course then the word got around and then everybody was asking for to tie them some of these red prawns because like that, it looks a bit more realistic as well than the normal traditional salmon flies then. And since the fish, the, the confident fish in the red prawns, then they, um, yeah, they'll fish these then. And there's a trick in fishing these. You don't fish them in the current. You actually fish them where it's very, very slow water and they twitch them. And the salmon come out of the pool then and, and hit the prawn then because they kind of just where it's very slow and they have the prawn there and twitching it. And actually that's how they, they manage to get the takes on these. Okay, thanks. Thank you. No worries. So for eyes, I'm going to use the um, easy shrimp eyes. This makes life easier, these eyes. They are ready made, so we can just throw them on. Yeah, because normally I do tie this in other colors, like the sandy colors or a grayish color for the for for the salt for when I'm fishing for bass and things, and they're very productive. So then when we did it on the on the red one, it um it worked because it looks like a real prawn then. So there you have the eyes. You put a small bit of glue of glue so it holds it there. It doesn't move then. <clears throat> so now I'm going to put just nylon, um, like a very, very thin mono. And this is just nylon thread, sorry, mono thread. So I just cut a piece and I'm gonna put that there as I'm gonna put a ribbon over it in a while. So, so when I put my, what you call this, the, the, this, this thread, um, I normally make a loop, like a knot before I tie it. So then it won't slip out as well. So I'll show you now. So I work my way back a moment. So I'll tie it in now. So it sits there, so it's not gonna move for me. And then I like securing it as well by just wrapping it to the front, a few wraps as well. So it will actually hold tighter then. So definitely that won't come off the, when I'm wrapping the, the shell over it because if you don't and you're in the middle of finishing your fly and then you're trying to wrap the shell and this comes off, you'll have to start all over again. So, that's why I do it that way. 
So before I put in the dubbing now, I'm going to add a small bit more of the American opossum. As you see, it has a lot of nice hairs there that looks like feelers. And so this gives a lot of movement in, in the water. Like my sea trout flies, even for the river now, back in the day, so I used to tie them with squirrel or fox, but now I start, I move to the black opossum of this and they give so much more movement. Softer material as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit, um, it's not as stiff as the squirrel, but yet it's a bit softer than the fox. So it's just in between, just where you want it. It moves and it moves so nice in the water. Like my sea trout fly, you know, normally you put a black wing over sea trout flies for night fishing and things. So I use that material now and you get good results on them. I really like that opossum. Right, so now we're gonna work our way to the back and start putting in the dobbing. So what I normally do is I start on the back, make my way to the front, and then make my way back to, to, to the back. So I like putting dobbing twice. So I like work my way to the front and then to the back again. This way um, the dobbing sits better and you don't have to, that gap as well or anything like that. So you'll have a better, um, it fills up the flight better you won't have thread, thread wraps and things like that showing. So again, I'm using that dubbing from um, the Cunha dubbing, the SLF dubbing. So you don't need to do it too tight to start when you time because you just want to cover it first and then you're gonna start tapering it when you're coming back down with the dubbing. You can see the carrot shape forming as well, can you? It's got in the shape, yeah. You kind of, you go for that carrot shape, exactly. Sometimes I like just, this might be in the way a bit, so I like just putting it there through the eye of the hole. There moments just to hold it for me while I build up the front here to get a bit of a bulk there. So I have that, like you said, the carrot shape, yeah. So, but you take your time with them and just build them properly, and then you'll have a proper shrimp term. And they last longer. Exactly, yeah. No point rushing them. <laughs> no, I'm going to put this back. This in a size, normally when I fish the salt, I would tie these um, shrimps in kind of a sandy color with an orange trigger point in the belly. So where I put the eye there, you remember I put the dobbin, I will use like a fluorescent orange kind of dobbin. And I will tie them very small now for the stalls. Then I will probably tie them in a size 10 or size eight. Sometimes I will use the size eight for bass, but my favorite now would, would for shrimps would be a size 10 or even size 12, it's very small shrimps. And you'd be surprised the fish that you get on them, like the like big bass and sea trout, they would take a size 10 
easily like and you'd be surprised like how did they see them in the cold on the coast but they do it like they even take small gamma roots like when fishing for for mullets and things like that they even take small little gamma roots patterns so shrimps are very good on the salt i love fishing the shrimps but there's a way of fishing the shrimps so the shrimps i normally fish them not when this um when there's a current so just that half an hour that you have that half an hour hour window that you have for the tide to turn so after when it's low water and before the tide turns to start coming in again that's when you i switch to the shrimps and it's deadly because all the fish that stay in the estuary then and things like that they'll be feeding on shrimps then looking for them because they'll kind of be hiding when there's, there's a current when the tide is, is moving out and that's when you just fish bait fish patterns but the shrimp, if you want to fish shrimps, the best time for it is just when the tides there, before the tides turn, you, that window you have, that's when you, is the best time to fish shrimps. And I like fishing them on a long, on a long leader. So I would put a long leader and about nine foot, 10 foot. And that's how I would fish, fish the shrimps. Floating lines. Now, can you see it there guys? This is visible. Yeah. So it looks a bit rough still at the moment, but it'll all get fixed now. So what I do is I brush it a small bit on top so the shell can sit on top of it now. Okay. So for the shell, I'm gonna use the Pro Sport Fishers, these 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 ones from Pro Sport Fishers and um I really like these shells. They have a good um, the segmentation on them and everything. They look very real. So you can do it as well if you don't have these. Like use just like that you use for squats, for example, the the body materials like the the stretch flosses and things like that. You can use that as well. But I like this because they have the segmentations in them. So what I do is I'm gonna set it right a few a bit behind the eye, as you can see, just a small bit behind the eye, not passing the eye. So I'm gonna go underneath, one soft wrap, then one more, just to hold, but I'm not gonna squeeze it yet until I have it sitting. As you can see, I want to make sure it's, it's sitting perfectly in the, in, in the center. You see? Once it's there where I want it, that's when I I pull it hard on it, and now it locks it. So I lift this. So a lot of people I see the Thai shrimps, they just wrap this around the the shell. But I find it looks better if you kind of what I do is normally I I lift the shell up, I put one wrap underneath, then put the shell back down, and then I do my second turn over that. You see, so it have it has a nicer profile. You don't have that thread wrap going across zigzag. So again, I go again underneath the, the the shell, and then pull my shell over it again. And now again, I go over the shell. Then so now we have like that. And I like one, two, and three um, segments there. So I like it in three pieces. I don't like more than three. I think it looks better just with three. So then we go one last one there to do the third one. Yeah. Nice shape to it as well. Yeah, exactly. It gives a nice shape in it, and you don't have those thread wrap going across like a zigzag. So it's it looks nicer like that. It looks more clean, as you can see. Look, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah.
Oops, a small, small bit of blue on the track. Let's give it a whip finish. So normally what I like doing after I whip finish this is I would whip finish it and then I would actually use kind of a fluorescent orange kind of as a trigger point maybe at the back here. And just have a, a like, you know, like they do with the salmon flies, you see they finish it kind of with a with a fluorescent orange. Um, Jungle cock. Head, yeah. I like doing that as well, but sometimes I like them as well without it. So you have an option then if you want to do it with or without the fluorescent. So now what I'm going to do to, to make sure this lasts longer as well, I'm just going to add a small drop of UV over the over the shell here. And so it it goes between where the where the threads are in. So they don't, after the salmon bites it and things that our fish bites it, you don't have, it will last you longer, so their teeth won't get to the to the little monoline. So I just put a small, you don't need too much UV because it's going to take away then the whole work that you did trying to get a nice shave of the, on top of the shell. So I put a small bit of UV and just spread it around, as you can see. Okay, so before I, I zap it, I like turning my fly upside down so the UV kind of there, so it doesn't run in my dubbing. So sorry about this. I'm moving right down so I can get blinded. Glad you put your hand there. <laughs> I didn't want I didn't want to blind you guys with the <laughs> Because this is a very strong, you see, it's a very strong torch. <laughs> I thought it might hit the and blind you, so that's why I said no. And you see the segmentation have kind of the the I don't know if you can see it. It has kind of the white over it. You see them? That's like a UV kind of. They're nice shells. These ones, they go kind of blue in 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 the shell. Right, and as the finest step then is the fun part, you just brush this all out to get the legs kind of sticking out kind of. Just brush it to the front. Okay, so what I like doing is the the front has always to be a bit more legs than than the back. If you look at the shrimp, they always have a, the front is a bit more bulkier than the back. So the back here, I kind of trim it a small bit. But I don't like cutting it with scissors because it doesn't look that much realistic then. So what I do is I just take it like this and I just pinch. I just pinch them off like that. You see, it has a, a more like a, it's, it's more natural. realistic. Yeah, exactly. It's not a straight cut because then it doesn't look really natural. So like that. There you have your eyes. Can you see it? Nice. Yeah. Huh? Really nice. I like that one. Yeah, looks more like a shrimp than a shrimp. Sorry, sir. <laughs> That's Chris. <laughs> so yeah, so that's what that's what the guys be fishing then on the rivers where they're not allowed to fish the prawns, the real stuff. Sorry, it looks more like a prawn than a prawn. <laughs> it's really good. Thank you. And my friend actually, 
he actually sprays a bit of, you know, the, the, this liquids that they buy like a scent. So he actually sprays scent on them, like <laughs> that fish is yeah, the, 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 the ones they use for like the, the robber lures and things like that. So the shrimp scent, he actually sprays it on it. But yeah, last year it worked for them. So that's the red shrimp. Any question, guys, before I say something else? No questions? No, pretty good. Perfect. Cool. So next, what shall we type? Hi, John. Hello. Um, I just wanted to ask you if you film with your handy cam as well. With my, sorry, with my which, sorry? With your cell phone camera. Yeah. Yeah, because this is the laptop camera, isn't it? No, I have... This one is my cell phone and my laptop camera is is there. You can see on top this, you can see me as well. That's the laptop. This is my cell phone. I have it in front of me. Okay. Can you can you switch to, to your cell phone maybe? I am on my cell phone. This is he my is, cell phone. Alois? Yeah. He's, he's using his laptop for the sound and for long distance. And he's using his iPhone centered uh, on the vice. Ah, okay. With the volume but, turned down. Because I was, I was thinking on the left side on the picture, you can see his phone. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to have a better picture of, uh, of the shrimp because I'm really interested in a good one. Yeah. Yeah. If you, scroll, if you scroll across all the people in the list, I guess you'll see he's, he's, he's on, John's on twice. He's yeah. got, he's got look, two. So look. just click on the one that says iPhone 13. That's yeah. it. It's perfect then. So. Do you get that, Alois? Yeah. Can you see it now? No, I can only see one picture of you. Go, go, go to the iPhone 13 across the top. There's iPhone 13. Ah. And then if you if you go to the I, picture, I pin it. Put pin it, and John will say that that fly will say uh, with the camera, ah. the iPhone camera will stay stay as center screen. Yeah, perfect, mates. Thank you. Can you see it now? Yeah. 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 Awesome one, buddy. Awesome. Thank you, buddy. Thanks a million. So that's the red prawn. So now we're gonna try. Let's try something simple at the moment there. So we will try a quick flat wing pattern, maybe. Say um, again, John. So now I'll tie something simple yeah. that, that works. Um, like, for example, if you're in a rush and you want to go fishing for bass and sea trout, you don't need to go with very fancy flies. So I'll just tie something quick there a moment and simple to kind of show that how you can tie simple flies that actually do work a lot as well. Yeah. This one I'm going to do is a size six um, because this one I'll use normally for sea trout, but bass do take them as well. So this one is the Arex hook, the light stinger hook. And this one is the light stinger, is the NS122 in a size six hook. Okay. So again, I'll put a small drop of super glue on my hook. Since I'm using the Nano silk, so I find it it sit it catches better. So you just roll it over it and then go over like that. It doesn't slip at all. Then you see. You can cramp a lot people. of pressure with that nano silk. You can, yeah. That's why I like it because you can really put pressure on it and it doesn't break. Saying that, no, I'm after trying this week. Now I'm after getting some power thread from Techstream. And I really like that stuff too. It's actually very nice as well. Okay, so we don't need to go all the way to the back like we did with the shrimp. We just go to the, the point of the hook. So have it aligned with the point of the hook. So first I'm gonna put a bit of white bucktail. So this is just white bucktail. You don't need too much. Some people really overdo the bucktails. So. 
should not be that. As you can see, it's very little bacterial amount I'm after taking. As you can see, it's 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 not even half a pen, half a pen. It's not even that. It's very little. Okay. So you do it one, two, well, two and a half sizes of hook there. Few soft wraps to the front. And then I, I squeeze that. It's very tight there. Okay. Put a soft wrap to the back to so hold it back in place. So what I like doing normally with my bocktails or any material is I take, I wet my fingers and I take my material and I give it a good twist. As you can see, I give it a good, a good twist. And this is, and then using a very sharp scissor, you cut it there. And as you can see, there's no bulk left or anything, or and it's it's a nice clean cut and a nice clean finish in your material. So you can see the, you see it's a nice clean finish then. Now we're gonna put a bit of flash there. This is just um, uh, what you call that. Just it's an openly colored flash. There's no name on it. This one I just got it online. So I just take two strands since they're very long, and I don't want I don't like using too much flash on my on my patterns. So what I'll do now is I work my way to the center of the fly, right there, and then I lay that. A bit about the size kind of, of the bottle, a small bit past the bottle. And then I fold this over to lay perfect on it on top of that. And I hold it there and now it's not gonna move for me. And you'll have your flash sitting nicely on top of the bottle. You see, I don't like overdoing the flash. As you can see, it's not much flash, but yet, if the light hits that, it will be seen. They will see it very fast. Okay, two seconds. So next, I'm going to use a small bit of craft work. So this bit, this pattern, we is going to be a simple one as we're going to use craft fur. So for those who don't know craft fur, craft fur is a synthetic material, so it's not a natural material. So it's, it's a synthetic material. As these patterns normally would use them on, on the coast and on the coast, you get snagged a lot of, and you lose a lot of flies sometimes. So you don't want to be using all the good stuff for, for your patterns like Nyad and all that. And like, I would use them on orders normally, but for my own flies, many times I just use the craft for us. The places I fish for bass and sea trout, they're very, very, snaggy and rocky and things like that. So I don't mind losing flies then. Since craft fur is very cheap to buy, you can get it for like three, four euros. So it's very cheap to buy. So now this one, I want to simmer a little bit longer than the bucktail. So the reason I put the bucktail is to hold the craft fur because craft fur is very light. There's a lot of movement. But what happens is if you don't put the bucktail underneath, I find it fouls a lot. So the bucktail actually supports it from fouling. So now we have a few turns. Helps us stop it wrapping around the hook as well. Yeah, it doesn't, if it, it, like, you know, the, the, the box will support a lot. So it's nothing worse like having to keep untangle it every five minutes after every cast. So, so there you have that. That's the white one. Now for the 
Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a piece of small chop bit of angel hair then. To kind of build a small bit there with the angel hair in the body before I proceed. You don't need too much, just a small bit. And it gives that, you know, that metallic kind of blue that you see when you see small bait fish, they always have that kind of a small little bit of metallic kind of bluish silver kind of by their belly there. So in the water, once the craft floor gets wet, this really comes through. And it shows them that the little, that blueness of the room. So now, one of my favorite colors to use would be like chartreuse. On most of my patterns I do use in the salt. I like chartreuse, like chartreuse is a color now that it's it's a very good color for the salt water. So I always make sure to add a small bit of chartreuse in my, in, in my patterns. It's just a color that I can rely on really. So again, you don't need too much. Make sure you clean out the underfurs always. Just line it up a small bit. You can see. See, it's, it's hardly any, it's just to give that bit of uh, chartreuse and so on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it a bit shorter than the white tail. Into your nails. Is get in shape, it has that taper. So always you keep going and make it a bit shorter than the last the last cut. So now I want a small drop again of the white underneath for the belly. Again, a, very, a small bit, you don't need too much. So I'm gonna use Crawford again. Like you can tie this as well with, um, I like tying it with, when I'm using natural materials, I will use marble fox. I said marble fox is a bit long, like a bit like the craft fur. So marble fox will be a bit longer than the, than the normal um, Arctic fox that you normally see it a bit shorter. So marble fox will work very good on these bait fish patterns as well. And there's a lot of movement in the marble fox. So now I'm gonna tie underneath. So to measure it, I put it on top of the chartreuse first to see that I want it a bit shorter than the chartreuse. So I'm gonna tie this underneath a bit shorter than the chartreuse because the belly I want always a bit shorter than the tail to have that kind of a taper look on it. It's getting shape now. So you can see it's already getting the bait fish pattern. It's the shape of it. So I want to add a small bit of glue at this stage now to make sure it gets secured. So they last a bit longer. So just put it on the thread. You don't need too much. Now again, we're going to put a small drop of the Angelina fiber again. Don't need too much, just to get that blueness coming through the belly. Okay. <clears throat> so 
So before we finish up with this one, I'm gonna just add a small bit of blue as well. And spadefish normally have that. When the sun hits them, you can see that small drop of blue that go through them. So I just wanna add a small bit of blue in it before I finish the fly. That one I want the small bit shorter than the short troops again. So now I want to add just that small bit of flash again, like, like we did at the start over the tail. So we're going to just put a small bit. You, again, you don't need too much. So what I normally do for this one, I just take two strands again. Just two strands and I just cut them and then like that, I cut them two strands and then I fold them again since they're long. And you don't have too much flash there because then when you put them on and fold them over, they're going to turn like eight then instead of four. So they're a small bit of flash over the blue. Then I did a six, 60 40, as you can see, the longer in the back and a bit shorter at the front. So I have a bit of a taper. Okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna just add the gray and that's it. Then it should be finished. And so this time we're gonna reverse tie the gray. We're not gonna do it from the front the way we did it. We're gonna reverse tie this um the gray um what you call this? The the gray craft. So we're gonna reverse tie this one. And you don't need too much material. Line them up a small bit. And this is going to be a bit shorter, just like that. So you work your way all the way to the eye of the hook there. Until it's there. Use soft wraps. And then you're going to fix it up a bit to make sure it's covering properly there. You hold that tight and then work your way back. And then just cut any excess. Then turn that, and now I'm going to put a little bit of white again underneath them to finish it. <clears throat> When you buy craft for just make sure you get the stuff like Vineyards has some nice, it's called extra select craft work. As well, um, the ones I normally use would be from Rainey's craft work is called. But the one from Vineyards is very good as well. Don't buy the stuff from China because they're 
very short and the quality is not great because like I ran out of craft, craft for there and I remember I ordered some stuff there a while back so I was looking for craft for and like this one you can see the quality is not great of it compared to the one you get from vineyard or from rainy's craft for. so don't buy the, the Chinese craft for because they're not it's, it's not great quality let's just say Okay, so he set up nicely as well, the white. And hold it so it doesn't move and work your way back as well. Not trim that. So the reason I'm trimming this is because, first of all, I want the blue from the belly to come through, like I did a while that. The shininess, but now I'm going to add as well a bit of red or fluorescent red, probably. Let me see. It has like pink and red and different colors. It's, it's, it's called Fusion Laser Dub and it's called Eat a Peach and it has a lot of fluorescent in it and it's a great dub. In. So I'm going to add a small bit of this now where I tied those. So that's going to be like a gill when when you um, finish the fly, you see it when you have the eyes on, it will look like gills coming through once the fly is wet. So I tie this very tight because I don't want too much bulk because I want to turn that material back to the back. So. If there's too much bulk, it's not gonna sit nicely. And I don't make my way all the way to the, the hook eye. I want to leave a bit of a gap there. So when I turn my when I turn my material to the back, there is somewhere that I can actually tie and finish the fly and not have materials blocking it. And it won't look nice. You you end up with patterns that have a big thread finish and all that. So so now we're gonna push your, make sure your thread is all the way to the end. You split your fibers underneath the white, and then you just push this with a pen or anything. Just wet your fingers just to hold your materials. Okay, so take your time doing this. So what I normally do now is I just take two wraps over that, soft wraps, just to hold it a moment. And then I check that everything is sitting where I want. Okay, so I want that sitting there. Yeah. White. Once you're happy, you separated everything properly. Put your fingers in. Then you can go to the front again. Hold that. I untie that because I don't like having that bulky thread trap. And I kind of take the thread trap just at the edge of that grapher. It's like literally just at the edge of it. Two wraps hard and then cross, go straight across them. Like that. So. Just at the edge and then go across. So you see you have a very small head there then where you tied your, your thread. So now in front of that then, that's where I'm gonna finish my, my fly then. The thread is gonna finish in front of the, as you can see, you don't have that bulkiness then. Nice teardrop shape. Yeah, you see when you taper it like that, it has a nice teardrop shape. And I don't know if you guys can see it. 
the blue goes through the gray wet the chartreuse then once that's wet and they mix together it has a nice it has that nice color then you see it, it goes from gray to kind of blue and chartreuse in it okay i'll just give it a small brush for this and we can stick some eyes on that and Like normally that would take only like a few minutes. You just tie that in a few minutes. Shouldn't take you more than five minutes to tie a fly like that. So it's handy when you're going fishing for bass and things like that. Just throw in a few of these and it's, you'll have a few flies in your box to go, go fishing with. So what I'll use, I normally just use this kind of glue to stick my eyes on, it's from Loctite. And it go, it's like robbery. Yeah, it, it has like it's it be, it's not it doesn't go hard. It stays like very flexible, which is great because then when you stick on the ice, they don't. If they get hit a lot, they don't break on you like from mountain things because of the flex flexibility of the of that glue. Okay. Almost a small fly, so we're gonna put probably a three mil out of this. I love the blue just shining through, John. You see what I'm telling you? The, and especially yeah, when it's wet. That's going to work, isn't it? Yeah, that blue gives it that bait fish. It's like when you look at bait fish in the sea or anything, they always have that kind of a shine of a blue go through it, as you can see. Hmm. I'm not sure if you can see it properly, but. Yeah, I can yeah. just see the red showing through as well on the head. Yeah. Lovely. When that gets wet, it looks like it looks like real gills. Then be nice if it was tied with a bit of black across the back as well to make it a variation. Yeah, exactly. So different colors, like I would tie them in all different colors. And many times, what I would do is I would throw on a flat wing over it as well. So I would throw in a flat wing over the over the, the bait fish and it gives the a nice um what you call that like it looks exactly like, like you know when you have some bait fish have all that marking on on top of it even like macros and things like that they have all that lines going on top it looks nice with 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 the like marbling effect yeah it gives a nice effect on it yeah look nice with a bit of peacock going through as well wouldn't it yeah, so like you can tie them so many different ways, so many um, ways of tying these and add materials, but like that. Peacock now, I really like that when I'm tying flat wings and I add the peacock over that. It's very it's very nice then with, with the peacock, yeah. It gives a good effect over it. So now when I put the UV resins on this, when I put UV resins, I always go over the eyes first because otherwise you're going to end up with kind of a U shape. If you start over the head first, what happens because these are flat eyes, if you put it on the top here first and the dry, the eyes are going to go like a U. So what I normally do is I put on the eyes first before I put it over the head and underneath. What glue was that, John? It's called Rates Up. It's called what, sorry? Rates Up. Can you see there? No. 
Tom John's hat. Great sap. There. Can you see the name? No. Tony, Tony, go across to, you're looking at the wrong picture of John. If you go to iPad 13. Oh, hang on. iPhone 13. Yeah, I think he's, he's got me very far away. John, John, John's yeah. using his, la his laptop for the sound and he's using his yeah. iPhone for the picture. So if you go across to uh, I iPad 13. IPad. iPhone 13. Yeah. iPhone 13, sorry, yeah. 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 And then pin that. There's three little dots. If you click on that, it'll you can pin it. And it, it, John's fly will stay centre screen. Well, I'm having all sorts of trouble here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I apologise. I had to use two cameras there because I don't have the, the settings and software to do the videos properly. So I had to use my phone separate. Okay, so when I do the underneath, you don't need to pull it too hard, but just what I do normally is I pull it back and then pull it down. So what happens is it creates kind of a, like a, like a circle, a half circle shape like this. You see the underneath. So what happens is when you put the UV resin on that, it stays, flushed with the belly then. So when you release that, it's actually on the same level. You don't have your UV sticking out more underneath than the, the belly itself. So it goes with the shape of the, the bait fish then. I'll show you now a sec. Now we have to, now we finish it with the top part of it. See, I did, I took my time and just did the sides first, then underneath, and then went to the top. There's no point rushing it because like it happened bef many times before that I used to kind of tie a fly and then that fly looks good. And then you go and rush the head and you just ruin your whole fly. So the head is where I spend more time to get it right. Same with salmon flies. You can tie a beautiful salmon fly and then they always say then the finish, then they ruin it with a very thick finish or something and it doesn't look nice. Less is more. Exactly, yeah. No, not sure if you can see that, but. You can see the blue in it as well. Yeah, that would work very well on my coast. Like this, I have a lot of sea trout on this pattern and bass, like it's like, but you can't see it properly in the camera there, but like, it looks like, like when this is wet, it looks very, very, very realistic. And it moves a lot. The craft bird gives a lot of movement. Are you getting a lot of movement, John, working that slow or do you work in it quite fast? Um, I like fishing this in currents. So what I do is I when I use this normally in the currents on the outgoing tide. So you cast them out and leave a swing like as if you're fishing trout, trout flies, you know, like you cast across the river and leave a swing. And then once it's swing, it gets to the, the end of the swing. That's when I start stripping it fast. Give it a good few fast strip because what happens is the fish kind of chase it in the turn and then they'll be coming after it. And this looks like it's escaping then. And yeah, or sometimes I fish this with a bigger um, pattern underneath. I don't know if you can see it, you know. 
So yeah. Yeah, very nice. Well, like I said, this was a simple pattern, so you you can, so you can um, just there you have it. So when you want to go fishing, you can just tie this quick, and um, go fishing with it. Cool. Any question, guys, or materials, maybe, or anything? Have we any questions? No questions. <laughs> right. What hook are you tied that on, John? Sorry? What hook are you tied that on? That one is called the A-Rex Light Stinger Hook. All right. The NS122. Uh, NS122, size six. Thank you. Right. Any other questions before we, until what time we have, Derek? Plenty of time. I, I, I'm an, uh, I got unlimited time, so you could go all night if you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I literally just finished work and I logged there. <laughs> so I'll type maybe a flat wing now. So this one would be more for the bath pattern then. So now I, this one I'm going to tie it on the minnow hook is called. And it's a short shank hook, as you can see. And it's called the uh, Arex NS. This one is the SA280 minnow hook. What size, John? Size two. Sorry, Derek. Size two. Okay. Right. And again, we start with the thread. Okay, there. Now, the one I just tied a while ago was for sea trout. Like this one all will be for, for bass as the size two hook. I find them a bit too big for the sea trout here in Ireland anyway. You find it hard to hook with them on the size two. But this pattern, now I would use it more for, for bass fishing now. So small bit of bottle again. No need too much. So I just line them up nicely and take all, all the small pieces, the short ones and the ones a bit too long, kind of fix them up a bit. I think that looks better. Okay, so this one I'm going to be about one, two, about two and a half fish, a bit longer than two and a half. Then. That's where I want it. Because for bass, I like using flies with a small bit longer tails on them for more movements. And the fact that they they chase a lot of sand things many times, I think I like having nice long tails on my bass flies.
Anybody else here fish a lot of salt water? I do do a fair bit of it. Who's that? Who said that? Pete. Pete Wilkins. Hey. hey, Derek. You are right, Bill? Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah. For your benefit, I'm... Bill, if you go if you go across to I, iPhone 13 and click on it and go to the, the three little dots and click on that pin, you'll have John as center screen with his fly. Okay. What he's doing, he's using his uh, laptop for the for the sound and to see him at distance. And he's using his iPhone for the, the camera. That's some flash again. Yeah, I live on the East Devon Dorset coast, John. Then in the southwest of England. Okay. And um, do a lot of bass fishing. I don't we don't get many sea trout from the sea. All right. So it's mainly bass. So drop me a message there after this then. And these flies, these bass flies are just tied there. I'll send them to you, then you can have them. Oh, very kind. I'll send them to you there. So so after you drop me a message there, and I'll send you these flies. Where about you fishing in Ireland, John? I used to fish in Waterford a lot because I lived in Waterford all these years, but I'm after moving out to Tremor. Sorry, I used to live in Cork a lot. And I'm after moving out to Tremor and Waterford. So now I'm fishing all Tremor, Dungarvan, and Wexford. So there's some good yeah. places for, for bass. That's known, that's known as the Irish Riviera, isn't it? Yeah, at least I'm in, in a good spot there. But like I said, Cork as well, you still have some good good um, fishing in Cork. Like I do miss, because like that, I used to have always all my marks. So now I need to kind of find all these places again, because I only moved to Waterford now since last November. So I'm out scouting every weekend now and trying to find all the spots. So. There's so, a yeah. nice one to the right of the fish calf on the Waterford seafront. The where, sorry? In Waterford, you know, you got the sea restaurant, fish restaurant, yeah. just on the front. Yeah. To the right hand side, about 100 yards up, was always quite good. I'm in Tremor, right by the beach. Yeah. The beach is ready five minutes from my house. So lovely, lovely part of the world. Yeah, it's beautiful here. So now I'm going to put Ewing Hackle. So you guys can see it. Ewing Hackle. So I'm gonna use first the white hackle. Okay. So I want it a small bit longer than my than the bucktail. So about there. Small bit, not too much longer, just a small bit longer. So what I do is I clean up a bit where I'm gonna tie. But I don't cut the stem because I want a bit of the stem to kind of hold it for me. So the way I do is I put it on top. I hold it down with my my <laughs> fingers there, and then a few soft wraps, well two three soft wraps, and then I just pull it. I lift it like that, and make sure it sits perfect. And see, and that's the reason I went further than the bucktail. So I can pull and have enough um, space to play with it so I can have it sitting perfect. So now that it's sitting there, you see it's sitting perfect. So I then I tie to the front, feel soft again. And now I tie it a few hard, strong turns to lock it there. So that's in place then. Sometimes it, yes. Oh, now we hold that back again. Okay, so now we pass the white one. And then we're gonna have stem 
the statue kind of it does have chartreuse in it as well. So it gives a nice contrast with the white. So I used to use a lot the normal hackers, but I realized for if you want the proper flat wings. I find using saddle hackers is way nicer. You have way much more movements with saddle hackers than you do with the normal um, hackers, as they're way much more lighter, as you can see. Okay. So now we're gonna put that a small bit shorter than the white. My dog is being bold out there. I can hear him crying outside. Mine's fast asleep behind me. No, because he's used to, after I finish work and I around this time we go for the walk and he knows he's like a clock. <laughs> so he's given out that where are you? <laughs> no. Can you see it over the white there? So this is gonna go a lot, gives a lot of movement then. Okay. Now, let's move it to the front a small bit and we're gonna put a bit of graphs for now again. We'll put some chartreuse craft work this time. Okay, maybe small bit, you don't need too much. And I want it to be not too long, the same length as the feathers, but a small bit shorter than the feathers. Because okay. it has to have that kind of that sandy kind of look. That's a handy little tip, that, John. Twist in it. Yeah, you see, it gives a clean cut. You don't have too much of a bulk there and things. So it, that's how I do my, my bucktails and everything. So I always give it just a, a twist. And if you have a very pointy scissor, you know, like this scissor is not great anymore. It's gone old now. But I don't like using my... That's another tip is... Please do not use, if you get craftware, don't use your good scissors on craftware because it will make them blunt. No matter how expensive your scissors are, it, they will go blunt. So if you're gonna cut craftware, just use a pair of scissors that's not too expensive or things because you will ruin your scissors with the craftware. But if I'm using natural material, yeah, I would use the pointy scissor. And like that, when you turn it, when you twist it, you have a nice, nice clean cut with it. Now down the knee again, like we did a while ago, we're gonna make it shorter again. You can always send your scissors to Simon Everett. Who, sorry? Simon Everett, Simon Sharpening Service. He was at the BFFI, he, he resharpened uh, my favorite scissors for me. Oh really? Yeah. I must get the, the I must look him up. Because I have a few scissors there that's gone blunt and I uh, have two doctors slick there and they kind of have gone blunt and me you know, and I don't want to throw them away. No, send them to Simon, he'll sort them for you. All right, so I look him up. Thanks for the tip. When I put my um address to you, John, I'll put on Simon's link. Um do is please. Sounds good, perfect.
You see this one is a bit slimmer than the rest because I want to keep it slim since we have the flat things here. So I wanted to have a slim profile. Like an this, eel. Uh, exactly, yeah, exactly. So now we're gonna put I wanted to go past all the way to the feather, it was a bit shorter. So around like the same size as the chartreuse. And this time I'm not gonna turn, I'm not gonna, you see, I'm gonna leave the front bit. I'm not gonna turn it over like I did with the, with the other one as I want to keep it there. Because what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna tie a reverse tie and I want this to go over the, the material when I reverse tie it. So I'm gonna keep it to the front like this. You see, that stays in the front now. So when I reverse tie, that goes over it. And you'll see when it's finished there, what I mean, a moment. Right, and as last, I like a bit of olive over the chartreuse since this is more of a sandy kind of feather. So I'm gonna put a bit of olive then to finish it. And this is gonna be around smaller, shorter than the chartreuse there, one that tapered this with it. Are you getting a lot of back in England at the moment? No, I haven't really kicked off yet. It's been very slow this year. Yeah, no, we've got the same. We've got May water in at the moment, which is not helping. Yeah, we're in May already and it's, then, like the temperature hasn't really got to the point yet for bait fish to start showing up and things. What we did get a lot very early this year here is um, shad. This shad oh. running up, yeah, the shad running up the rivers here already. They're a bit, bit early because normally they don't come in until like June, really, and they started showing up already here, yeah. They're fun to catch as well on the fly. They they fight hard. Yeah, we had mackerel in uh, about three, four weeks ago. Oh, really? They, they're they fun on the fly rod. Like, like oh, they are. And yeah. garfish, but they come in later. Yeah, like the mackerel there on, on a size six, uh, size five, size six fly rod is so much fun. John, yes. What shad do you guys get in the UK? In Ireland, it's um. Is it hickory, American threadfin? There's like six different versions of them. Which which version do you guys get there? Oh, I wouldn't know which version. No, <laughs> I know the guys. We they just say, oh, the shads are in, so we will fish for them. But I don't know exactly. There's different ones. There, these ones now. They're about a pound, two pound fish. So they get okay. pretty big. Well, okay. big for a shad, like. Just like mackerel. Yeah, they're the size of macros and things like that, yeah. But I find they fight harder. They yeah, I caught, some, I caught some in the Carolinas a few years ago, American and uh, hickory, both. The, the American were quite big, maybe a uh, pound and a half, I mean, you know, yeah. 12, to, 12 to 18 inches in length. Yeah, good fighters. They, they they fight they fight good like yeah soft soft mouths though 
Yeah. For them, silver little silver patterns. I tie very silver bait fish with loads of flash in it, kind of thing, and seems to work good. <clears throat> we had a few bonito showing up off the shore last year. Oh, really? About yeah. two, three pounders. They fought well. Yeah, in Ireland too. The the, the tuna is very close this year. Like they they normally have to go very far for them, but this year they were very close to the harbour. Yeah, no, we've had a lot of tuna down southwest. Um, the last well four or five years. <laughs> Frighten the life out of you when they jump not very far from you. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I put the same. Eat the peach. This this is very nice dubbing. I just want to show you. If you see, it's very fluorescent in the water, especially in the, when you're fishing. This it's as a trigger point. It's very very good. That's saying your laser dub. Eat the peach. So I like using it here for, for when I do my um gills kind of that comes it comes through like like gills. Now, I don't know about in Ireland, but our mackerel was appalling last year. Very hit and miss. I don't really fish for them. But when I fish for bass, they get annoying because they always hit my flies. But last yeah. year, I didn't have one mackerel hit the fly. I didn't have, I didn't see any mackerel at all. Like normally in Cork, where I used to live, I used to get infested with mackerel. And to believe last year, I didn't see any mackerel at all. It was weird. Now, we had a job catching mackerel last year. Yeah. But you can see it has that nice, I don't know if you can see it, it's a nice sandy look now. Loads of movement. Oh yes, these flat wings are going to get close to move, but I'm not finished yet. Um, I just tie it now like this. And then you'll see what I do next. So. Do you use your flat wings more in less rapid water? I really, I fish um, in any water. Most of the times I like fishing the flat wings. Like most of my fly box would be flat wings. So I would fish them in rapid water, slow water, but I find they're effective in slow water. So you have that, that more movement anyway. So it's great for in slow water when you, want to fish when the last two hours of low water, when there's not much movement anymore, I find flat wings are, are amazing. Yeah, no, that's what I found. Yeah. You don't have to work them as hard. Exactly. Small bit. So the reason I do this now is because I want to a small bit of fire there with my lighter because I try to make this as flat as possible now. Because what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna put one more flat wing over it, and you will see what I was telling you. It gives that nice segment over it, kind of marking over it, like you see the macros with half and things like that. So we have our feather. So I want this a bit shorter now. No, I don't like this one. Oh, this one. Oh, take your time picking your feathers. No, that's a good one. 
So I want this to be a bit aligned with, a bit shorter there, kind of aligned over the, you can see with the other one that I put a while ago. So it's a small bit shorter, but not too much shorter. As you can see, there's a, there's a step between them. So, okay. So I'm gonna cut that moment. The reason I'm cutting is because I want to get it, you trim that there, so you get that pointiness there. So, let me see. Okay. What I'm gonna do now is I wet my fingers to kind of make this a bit thin. I want it to close up a small bit for me. So, maybe a small drop of UV on my fingers and pull it. You want to have it a bit pointy for, for the next, what I'm gonna do next. So as you can see, I close it like that a small bit. So now it's not too much of the feather sticking out. So it's more closed up. So when I put it over the head, it will sit nicely then. So now again, we will take the rate stop UV. And that's the medium one, because it comes in different strengths. You get the medium, you get the hard, and you get the, the light one. So I find medium one is very good for when you stick it on feathers and things like that. I don't tie my feathers, these ones at the end. I don't like tying them because like I said a while ago, I don't like to have too much bulk on my flies at the end. I want my, the head to finish nicely and things. So that's why I don't tie them there and it lasts longer if you stick them with the UV. Because I find when you tie it, it, it eventually breaks where you tied it. But if you stick it with UV, it doesn't. So you see what I do now? I lift my feather and I put the point to be kind of right in the middle of the hook eye there. So I use the hook eye to kind of be, to guide me. So I want the point of that feather to, to, to sit right in the middle of it. This one, you have to take your time and do this. So it's sitting properly. Let me hit it. Nice profile. So you see then how it sits over it. That flat wing then will sit over it as well. So the move, the amount of movement of this pattern, you have the two flat wings in the tail. As you can see. Okay, you have the, and you have that on top then as well. You see the markings and how it sits over it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Interesting tip about gluing that last one in. Yeah, because then you you know sandtails always have that kind of a narrow point nose, like they don't have a big head. The 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 sand is always kind of a arrowy kind of nose. So you want to stick to the profile like the same way when you do trout fishing is match the hatch. You want to do the same on the coast and match the hatch. <laughs> because many times the shape is what matters more than the fly itself. If you have the right size and the right shape, they'll take it. So I'm just gonna just add a small bit of UV now so I can have it even with the feather. So there's no gap between them. So when I stick my eyes, they don't fall out to them. You make crab patterns as well. I've tied a bit of few crabs before for when I go home. Originally, I'm, on, I'm from Aruba originally, it's the Caribbean. So when I go home, I would tie a few crab patterns and things, yeah. But not here in Ireland, I haven't really used it. But to be honest, I was thinking of making some this year, some green crabs, because where I fished in Cork before, and then in Don Garvin, there, there's a lot of oyster beds. And I see the bass hitting crabs where the oyster beds are. So this year, I was thinking of tying a few small crabs and give it a try there and see 
Maybe they will work green crops, they say will work good. Perfect. So now we're going to. <laughs> So for this one, I will want a bit your eyes now. Okay, so for this one. John, I've muted you. So somebody sneezed in the background. I tried to mute him, and I've, I've muted you instead. <laughs> oh. I don't think you can hear you, Derek. John, I've muted you. Here we go. You're on mute, John. Can you hear me now? That's it, yeah, John. That's it. Somebody Perfect. sneezed in the background and I tried to mute them and I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> no worries. So what I was saying is for this one, I'm going to use smaller eyes than the ones I used a while ago. The ones I used a while ago were four mil. These ones actually are three mil because when you look at sand deals in the water, they normally have very their their head goes very slim and they have very small eye, very small eyes. So let me add this here. Well, now we will use the sandies because we have to start out with the line up properly. <clears throat> Lovely profile to it. Yeah, really nice flies. Huh? I want the eyes to line up properly so they don't look weird with the feather because you can really mess it up since you have the feather on. You don't have the in between to look at the. So it's always in the way. You can see the red as gills goes through. I don't know if you can see that. Right, so nearly done. So what we do is we just add a small bit of UV there on the eyes again, like we did a while ago. So you do, they don't close up on you. I did on the eyes first. I like 
normally with the, these will be tied very more you can tie them very fast and things it's just for the course not like you know like the explanation and things you're taking your time but like you can tie this in a few minutes and use them for salt water flat wings are very underestimated they don't get used that much but they're actually deadly pattern even these flat wings i've used them on the lakes here in ireland one time I forgot my, my I was pike fishing and I forgot my flies and I only had my flat wings in the car. So I went and just took my flat wings. Actually, I had pikes on them. Like, because the movement on them, there's so much movement that fish just hit them. Like, what I normally do as well for some of my flat wings, I would add, I don't know if you guys know the, it's called the Mark Petitjan um, Magic Hat. So they go in the front and they give a lot of movement. And so you, it, it, it's like a cone that you put a cone in the front. And when you have that, it really gives a lot of movement to the flat wings. They move crazy then. Okay. You can buy something different. Uh... Like like the Marc Pidigera stuff, uh, it's called the Wiggle Disc. Do you know that? No, I've never seen that one. You need to Google it. Um, it's Wiggle called disc. Wiggle Disc, and you can it, can get it in different diameters. For normally, it's for lure fishing, for plastics, soft plastics. Ah, okay, okay. And it's it's uh, you can buy it in a in a quite small diameter, uh, like the small magic heads as well, and uh, you know they cost uh, just just 30 percent of it oh really yeah i've used the flyco as well I have a nice one the flyco has the flyco lips so the the flies will actually look like lures so you 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 set the, the lips in and looks like lures so but i haven't had any recently i must order some new ones but they also work great but i found the mark british and um magic hats push more water yeah, we'll have a look if I find a package here. Yeah, got it. Just send me a picture of where we get a chance. I got, actually, I got both of them here. <laughs> so it's the Mark Pidgey jar head. I don't know if you can see that. Mm. And, and the uh, Wiggle Fin Action Discs, that's what it's called. Okay. I will look them up then this evening after this. For casting or trolling. <laughs> yeah. A little shirt button just on the tippet in front gives a very similar effect. Does it? Yeah. Well, it's it slip pushes the water and makes it go in all sorts of angles. And do you use a little rubber stopper or something to hold it in place? Not to go yeah, because usually when you got it on, it stays there up against the fly. Okay, let me try that too. Yeah. So you learn something new every day. Right, it was used years and years ago where people used to use it. I think it was with worms originally, where you would put it in front of a worm to give it extra mo movement. Hmm when you were pulling a worm through the water. <laughs> you put it on your leader, Pete? Yes, just yeah. on the tip of it. Just in front, you know, just till it sits just in front of the eye of the fly. Yeah, so it slides down. Yeah. Interesting. I must do that, so. Try that with some with some uh, trout lures as well. That would really work. Really, you see, like there's a lot of things I don't know. <laughs> That's can you see nice. That? Yeah, very nice. Lovely so, profile. I like to add a bit of on this one then, just to hold that feather in place so it doesn't move again. Extra protection. So yeah, so there you have 
Tá, se tá. Tá bom, fica assim. Yeah. See that it has that when it's wet in the water, it really all these feathers move them because you have the top one, then the middle one, and then the one underneath. There's three feathers there. So the movement of this is is very nice. And that's why I use the short shank hook, because you'll have more movement than of the tail. If I used the longer hook, I found the movement is not as not as great as when you have the short shank hook on, on them. So if you want more movements and you have a longer tail, I would advise use a short shank hook. And people say, yeah, but you're gonna miss fish. You're gonna have a lot of tail bites, trust me. Bass, when they, they want something, they'll just, they'll inhale the whole flight. Suck it right in. Oh, they'll, they'll hit this, like, yeah. They usually hit head first anyway. Exactly, they come and just, they just hit it here. So yeah, that's, you can see, as you can see there, the, you see the, if you can see the, the saddle hole, they sit on it. But it's way nicer than tying it. You see, when you glue the saddle on, it looks way nicer than when you tie it. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Any question, guys? No oh, questions? Yes. So yeah, sorry, the, the salt water patterns, they take way much longer than probably trout flowers and things around. Like, you know, they're, they take way much longer than to tie them. It looks really great. Um, I lived in Florida for, for a lot of my life, and yeah. I would have used that for snook or redfish. Yeah, like this, I take them when I go home to Aruba, and mm -hmm. I would fish snook for them, yeah. Especially in white, I like fishing flat wings and white, white flat wings. I have a lot of success with white flat wings. And um, with the mullet colors as well. Snook seems to love the, the mullet color ones. So yeah, so that's all for now. What you guys? That, that was superb to be fair. Really, yeah. really thank interesting. Thank you very much. So, and, and stunning. So thank you. Yeah. Really, thank you very much indeed, John. Yeah, really good. And I will send the flies. Send me the address there, because I, I couldn't see on the screen who, who, um, who was